What's up, everybody? Let's talk Jets radio. I am tired. I am frustrated. Uh, what a day at the stadium. First off, thank you to everybody that showed up at the tailgate. Uh, just really cool getting to meet so many of the, the names with the faces on, on the YouTube channel. Really cool. Uh, you know, just sharing some drinks, some good food, some laughs. Unfortunately, going inside was miserable once again. Um, you know, the first 20 minutes or so, pretty cool. The, the crowd was into it. Thought it would be a little bit louder at kickoff. A lot of fans, you know, still struggling to, to get to their seats at kickoff in spite of the fireworks. Maybe that was because their tickets can't load. Took me about 40 minutes. Uh, still got in there at 12.30. Decent crowd. Um, they were definitely fired up. They they fed off the energy early on with the sacks. The defense was playing well. You get the touchdown to Conklin. You're up 10-3. to three. Everything's going well. And then, you know, I, I feel like there were two things that kind of shifted momentum. First was the, the third down defense, which I think took the crowd out of it a little bit. Uh, I think there was a stretch where the Patriots went like six of nine on third downs. Defense was playing well on first, well on second. And then third down, they would just, you know, lose containment on Mac Jones. They'd miss a tackle. They wouldn't wrap up. Penalties, just, you know, all sorts of shit. And, you know, you go to the, the biggest thing, which was the penalty, um, you know, 10-3, chance to be 17-3 on a pick six from Michael Carter. And then that turns into 10-6 after the roughing the passer on JFM. Completely swung momentum there, and then the Patriots get the ball to start the second half, march down the field, 13-10, and the Jets never recovered. They couldn't play from behind. Zach is just too inconsistent. And I'll go right to the offense, and listen, it's not to say the offensive line was great because they weren't. It's not to say that the play calling was great because there's plenty of issues that you can point to there. You know, the, the usage of Berrios, not using Elijah Moore at all in this game, I think is ridiculous. I understand you're trying to send a message about how he approached uh, his lack of targets, but still, you have a chance to beat the Patriots. You have a chance to get to 6-2. and two. Why they tried to, you know, play this, you know, I'm going to send a message to you game, when clearly he was somebody that should have been involved in this game plan. I have no idea why. Um, but Zach is struggling. There, there's no way to sugarcoat it anymore. You know, he's got to play better. He's got to elevate guys around him. He is way too careless, way too reckless with the football, just throwing it up. It, you know, the last two weeks he got lucky. Some balls just dropped in. Um, you know, some others, you know, interceptions were dropped. He, he got very lucky on a few. This week he didn't get so lucky. And ultimately, when you're that reckless, when you're that careless with the football, more often than not, bad shit is going to happen. And again, he, he struggles to get to 50% completion percentage. His numbers, you know, by almost every single metric are not getting better from where they were last year. His decision making is bad. His footwork is bad. You know, he's got the, you know, he's going back to the, the hero ball, you know, trying to extend plays for way too long. I, I don't understand what he's doing out there half the time. He does not look good. And it, it's accurate what Connor Hughes was saying on, on the SNY. Uh, post game that the New York Jets are a playoff team right now that's being held back by their quarterback. It, it's hard to look at it any other way. The the defense has been playing great. The the run game has been carrying the offense for most of the year. They're they're a quarterback away, you know. And you know, at at what point do you look at where they are right now at five and three, still with a legitimate chance to get to the playoffs, and say, you know what, you owe it to guys like Dwayne Brown and, and other veterans who may not be here for you know much longer in the NFL they want to get a shot at the playoffs. At what point do you say, you know what, we got to go with the guy who gives us the best chance to win. And if that's Mike White, somebody who can go through his progressions, go through his reads, get the ball out quick, accurate, then so be it. Because right now, the Jets lack a true game manager. And I understand that you could say Wilson didn't throw any interceptions or do anything to, to hurt the team the last few weeks, but he didn't do anything to help. He didn't elevate anybody, and he's just flat out not accurate. So until he can figure it out, and the worst part also is that you worry about the divide now. You hear the comments from him after the game, you know, kind of, you know, going back with Connor Hughes, um, not fully taking accountability, saying, yeah, I need to play better, but it's not fully on my shoulders, you know, and then you hear the comments from Elijah Moore, how can I talk about chemistry when I'm not getting the football, you know, Salah says he needs to play better, you know, the, the locker room and the guys in there, they know the quarterback is holding them back right now, so at what point do you really start talking about a divide? where, you know, players are taking sides, they're frustrated at the offense, you know, defense is pointing fingers. Like, that's the last thing you want. These guys, you know, they've been busting their ass all year. They deserve a shot at the playoffs. If Mike White gives them a better chance, so be it. Salah's got to be ready to, to pull the plug, ultimately, if we're in that position. Again, I think it would be different if we were 2-5, and 3-5. and five. You say, fuck it, you ride it out with Zach. But right now, you're still 5-3. and three. If he comes out and he struggles again next week against Buffalo, I think you got to make the move, see what Mike White has. Again, I know he struggled against Buffalo, uh, you know, last year, but still he's shown you a little bit more, I think, than 
unfortunately, than what we've seen from Zach Wilson so far, which is just flat out not good. So talk to you guys later. Frustrating day. We'll be live tomorrow, 8 o'clock.